Angie, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. It is not the best. Shri Chaitanya Tanya Manakishta. He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatvate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Sapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vritha Vishwari Vishabhanu Sute Devi Rananami Hari Priye Vanchakal Patarubhyascha Rupa Sindhu Vaiva Chha Patitanam Pavane Pyo Vaishnavayo Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Vita Gadadhar Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Prabhuji, thank you very much for joining in and making yourself uh, available to us. Thank you on this Sunday morning over there and Sunday evening over here. Prabhuji, we are reading the Srimad Bhagavatam. We are on Canto 2, Chapter 1. Chapter 1 is the first step in God realization. And the text for today is text 28, Prabhuji. So, Prabhuji, I hand over to you. Kindly let me know. If you wanted me to read something, Hare Krishna. Yes, if you could read the uh, Sanskrit, please, in the translation. I'll read the purple. Okay. Urasthavalam jyotir anikam ashya griva maharvanam vajanosya tapo varatim vidurahadipumsha Satyam Tishishanu Sahasya Ura, hi. Sthalam, place, the chest. Place. Jyoti, Anikam, the luminary planet. Luminary planets. Asya, of Asya. him. Of him. Griva, the Griva, neck. the neck. Maha, Maha, the planetary system above the, planetary the luminaries. planetary system above the luminaries. Vadanam, Vadanam mouth. mouth. Why? Exactly. exactly. Jana, Jana, the, the planetary, planetary system, system about above Mahar. Mahar. Asya, Asya, of him. Of him. Tapa, Tapa the planetary system, the planetary about, system the about the Janas. Janas. Varatim, Varatim forehead. forehead. Vidu, Vidu is known. Is known. Adi, Adi, the original. The original. Pumsha, personality. Pumsha, personality. Satyam, the Satyam, topmost planetary system. Topmost planetary system. Two, but. Two, but. 
Sirsani the head. Sirsani the head. Saharsa one thousand. Saharsa one thousand. Shishnaha one with heads. Shishnaha one with heads. Translation by Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. He died. The chest of the original personality of the gigantic form is the luminary planetary system. His neck is the Mahar planets. His mouth is the Janas planets. And his forehead is the Tapas planetary system. The topmost planetary system known as Satyalok is the head of he who has 1,000 heads. Prabhuji, I hand over to you. Hare Krishna. Yes. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. The effulgent luminary planets like the sun and the moon are situated almost in the midpoint of the universe. And as such, they are to be known as the chest of the original gigantic form of the Lord. And above the luminary planets, called also the heavenly places of the universal directorate, demigods, are the Mahar, Janas, and Tapas planetary systems. And above all, the Satyaloka planetary system, where the chief directors of the modes of material nature reside, namely Vishnu, Brahma, and Shiva. This Vishnu is known as the Shirodakshai Vishnu, and he acts as the super soul in every living being. There are innumerable universes floating on the causal ocean, and in each of them, the representation of the Virat form of the Lord is there, along with the innumerable suns, moons, heavenly demigods, Brahmas, Vishnus, and Shivas, all of them situated in one part of the inconceivable potency of Lord Krishna, <clears throat> as stated in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 10, <clears throat> excuse me, text 42. And that text, uh, 1042, is a tava bahunai tena kim kyatena tavarjana. This tabyaham idam krishnam ikam shenas tero jagat. But what need is there, Arjuna, for all this detailed knowledge with a single fragment of myself? I pervade and support this entire universe. And the uh, purport of that text. The Supreme Lord is represented throughout the entire material universes by entering into all things as the super soul. The Lord here tells Arjuna that there is no point in understanding how things exist in their separate opulence and grandeur. He should know that all things are existing due to Krishna's entering them as super soul. From Brahma, the most gigantic entity, on down to the smallest ant, all are existing because the Lord has entered each and all and is sustaining them. There is a mission that regularly propounds that worship of any demigod will lead one to the supreme personality of Godhead or the supreme goal. But here in the 10th chapter, that idea is thoroughly discouraged. To completely eradicate this wrong idea, in this chapter, Lord Krishna informs us that even the greatest demigods like Brahma and Shiva represent only a part of the opulence of the Supreme Lord. He is the origin of everyone born, and no one is greater than him. He is Asa Mordva, which means that no one is superior to him, and that no one is equal to him. In the Padma Purana, it is said that one who considers the Supreme Lord Krishna in the same category with demigods, even Brahma or Shiva, becomes at once an atheist, if, however, one thoroughly studies the different descriptions of the opulences and expansions of Krishna's energy, then one can understand without doubt the position of Lord Sri Krishna and can fix his mind in the worship of Krishna without deviation. The Lord is all-pervading by the expansion of his partial representation of super soul who enters into everything that is. Pure devotees, therefore, concentrate their minds in Krishna consciousness and full devotional service Therefore, they are always situated in the transcendental position. Devotional service and worship of Krishna are very clearly indicated in this chapter in verses 8 through 11. That is the way of pure devotional service. 
How one can attain the highest devotional perfection of association with the Supreme Personality of Godhead has been thoroughly described in this chapter. Srila Balade Vijabhushana, a great acharya in disciplic succession from Krishna, concludes his commentary on this chapter by saying, from Lord Krishna's potent energy, even the powerful sun gets his power, and by Krishna's partial expansion, the whole world is maintained. Therefore, Lord Sri Krishna is worshipable. So we're continuing our study of Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 1. Today's text is 28. And the title of the chapter is The First Step in God Realization. So we are familiar with uh, what is happening. Uh, at the time of um, asking what he should do, having heard that he was going to leave this world, Shukadeva Goswami arrived and they are having a discussion in answer to that question. And so Shukadeva Goswami has been describing how to uh, meditate on Krishna, beginning with um, seeing Krishna um, within within uh, everything that we, we see. And in this text, it is a very uh, grand text. There is uh, not much excluded here. It's speaking about the entire universe. And we go outside at night. Um, I suppose it's dark there now or soon so then the uh, you can see the stars sometimes the planets and so many many thousands of stars and all of that it is described here uh, or Shugadev Goswami is explaining to us that we should understand this to be the uh, gigantic universal form of Krishna. The end of this, this purport, Srila Prabhupada writes, all of this is situated in one part of the inconceivable potency of Lord Krishna. So really, uh, the truth is, uh, for many of us, for many people, we're very busy. Uh, life uh, is a busy, especially after we start school, five, six years old. And we're very busy with school and friends and boyfriends and girlfriends, and, uh, maybe uh, college and marriage, I'm very busy. And somewhere in there, we have we may have uh, parents or relatives, and they introduce us to the uh, the church, the temple, the mosque. And there's some God consciousness, but we're all very busy. And most people uh, uh, as far as we can understand, we don't think about God very deeply. Uh, in America, they, we have the, the money, the dollar bill, $5 bill, $10 bill, so many, uh, the currency, paper, maybe on the coins too. Uh, but it says, in God we trust. Uh, but who is God? What? What is God? Really? Uh, we bandy that about uh, God. And everyone knows God is great. But how many people uh, spend time to sit and reflect how great uh, Krishna is? That everything, everything we see is just one part of his potency. 
you know, Krishna is not, uh, Srila Prabhupada writes in the ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, we should not think that Krishna is like the uh, the Greek god. There, there's a powerful demigod in, in Greek uh, culture, Atlas. And he's holding up He's holding up the earth, and he seems to be having some trouble. <laughs> it's heavy. So Srila Prabhupada says, God is Krishna is not like that. Uh, he is inconceivable, infinite power. Uh, inexhaustible. We get tired. We work all day, and we're tired. Our body is tired. Our mind is Krishna never gets tired. And uh, his wallet, his bank account never becomes empty. Uh, inexhaustible, infinite, infinite uh, potency and capability, never ending, never ceasing, and eternal. Uh, Ishwar uh, Parama Krishna, Satchitananda Vigraha. Ishwara Parama, Satchit, eternal. It's not that Krishna is just very old, uh, ancient, but there was, uh, he is beginning us. There's never a time where he came into existence. Neither us. At the beginning of the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future shall any of us ever cease to be. And we think about that. We should think about that. So this is uh, Krishna consciousness uh, trying to understand Krishna in truth, trying to realize Krishna. Uh, so we have our our sadhana, uh, so that uh, in the morning and evening, or at least in the morning, the idea is that we humans, we regularly uh, set aside some time uh, for uh, meditation on Krishna, quiet, deep meditation on Krishna, so that we can... Uh, as Krishna says, Janma Kamar Chame Divyam Evam Yoveti Tatvataha Tatvataha. In truth, one who understands me in truth uh, is guaranteed to return home back to the spiritual world. Such a wonderful benefit. A big profit. <laughs> we can make a big profit by uh, truly trying to grasp. Uh, who is Krishna? What is Krishna? Janma karma to me divyam beti tattvataha. That he goes to the spirit, the one who understands my transcendental nature, he goes to the spiritual world and never returns. So this second chapter, it is very thick in uh, connecting us to Krishna uh, where we are. So in the purport, or to begin with, with the verse, the chest of the original personality is the luminary planetary system. His neck is the Mahar planets. His mouth is the Jana planets. Forehead, the Tapa planets. And the topmost planetary system, known as Satyaloka, is the head of him who has 1,000 heads. So we can we go outside and we um, can consider uh, at the bottom of this creation, the bottom of this universe is Lord uh, Brahma with the, uh, well, in one, uh, not Lord Brahma, Garbhodakshaya Vishnu, and from his navel is coming the whole uh, lotus flower of existence from bottom to top. Uh, and so this is giving a very visual uh, Visualization. Uh, there are different planets and different systems, different degrees of opulence and uh, understanding. 
Mahar planets, Jana planets, Tapa planets, the Satyaloka planetary system. Uh, in the purport, it's noted that the directors of the universe, Lord Vishnu, Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, they reside in the highest planetary system. And as uh, as uh, fantastically big all of that is, and it is very big, just like we are on this planet Earth right now. We are in different countries on this planet. The Earth is uh, supposed to be spinning around about a, th a thousand miles per hour, and it's traveling around the sun about 66,000 miles per hour. And all these planets, which revolve around the sun, uh, the Mercury and Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, all these planets that are revolving around the sun, all of that solar system is moving through this uh, collection of solar systems, which is called the Milky Way galaxy. That's the name that's given to it by us humans. Uh, and it's traveling through that uh, galaxy, something like 165,000 miles per hour, very fast. And this galaxy, this galaxy uh, is just one of thousands from our point of view thousands of galaxies if you go on the internet and you do a search for uh, galaxies uh, we you can find uh, photographs images of space of uh, hundreds of galaxies uh, tremendous distances separating them it just uh, we can hardly imagine how far, how big this universe extends. And so here, uh, we are we are hearing that this whole collection of thousands of galaxies and millions of solar systems and tens of millions of planets is just one out of innumerable uh, universes which are coming from the body of Lord Mahavishnu, just like bubbles. Their children, they have that thing, they blow the bubbles and the bubbles, they go out. Or sometimes if you're washing something and you have the soap bubbles, you get so many bubbles. So, so many universes and inside them, uh, thousands of galaxies. And just, that is just one part one quarter. It is told in the Padma Purana that this, all of this is one quarter of the total existence. And three quarters is Vaikuntha. So inconceivably big. So how, how uh, inconceivable is Krishna? So great and so capable. So that this is one of the points as we were discussing last week. That Krishna is capable of uh, looking after us, of guiding us, of protecting us from Maya. So these different planetary systems, just like we see in this world, if you go into the city, you go to Nairobi or any big city, there are different uh, areas, isn't it? There's different quarters. You can go to a neighborhood and uh, everything is kind of dirty and it's broken down. Uh, the people are not dressed very well. Perhaps it's dangerous in that part of the city. People don't go there at night, maybe not even during the day. And then there's another quarter of the city, isn't it? That uh, there are good-looking houses, flats, and the streets are neat, and there are trees. Uh, 
and the people are dressed better and they have different vehicles. It's a different, uh, it's a different atmosphere, isn't it, than that other area. And then you can even go to another uh, neighborhood where, where people we say who are wealthy live or affluent and they have bigger houses and uh, newer, more expensive clothes and everything is of a different vibration. Uh, when we go, if we go into uh, a five-star hotel, you, know, you go into the lobby, it's like being in another world. It's like another planet, uh, how the uh, the hotel is decorated inside. Uh, you go into a mansion, a palace. If you go, you can find tours of uh, mansions of the world, palaces, homes of billionaires. And you can take a video tour and see. And it's as if you're on another planet. We don't usually see such all of the different uh, furnishings and decorations and everything. It's of a it's of a uh, a different uh, different level. So th this is how it is throughout the universe. There are different levels. There are different uh, modes of nature. Different modes of nature. You have the lower planetary systems, the middle planetary systems, the Satya Loka planetary systems, and we have Vaikuntha. So I was I was thinking today that uh, Vaikuntha and the spiritual world it is described as Chintamani. Everything in Vaikuntha, in Goloka Vrindavan, uh, is made of Chintamani. Uh, it is uh, made of consciousness and everything there so we were we can get just a little glimpse you know we're speaking about the opulence the beauty the cleanliness uh, of uh, mansions and uh, palaces and five-star hotel lobbies everything is so opulent with marble and gold just decorated so nice so th this is just some indication of what Vaikuntha is like uh, what the spiritual world is like the spiritual world is not in a dry place it's not uh, a boring place uh, it's not a nothing place you know the thing is here uh, in order to Go back to the spiritual world. We have to become attached to spirit. Uh, we have to become detached from matter. So because uh, just like Srila Prabhupada gives the example that uh, a patient, a patient who has some disease, any disease, often they're, they're, they're put on a special diet. They can't eat the way they ate before. Certain diseases very restricted diet uh, but that diet is meant to bring the patient back to full health and the once the patient comes back to full health or close to full health they can eat again isn't it they can eat all of the good tasty foods again uh, so i mean the healthy situation is enjoyment uh, the healthy situation is not being on the restricted diet, but the restricted diet is necessary sometimes. So on, this, on the path of Krishna consciousness, of transcendental realization, uh, often or usually to one degree or the other, in order to become uh, healed of our material attachment, we have restrictions. Uh, we always have restrictions, but... We are, uh, I'm speaking in general, uh, just like the order of sannyas, uh, it is strictly forbidden uh, to actively seek out comfortable sleeping situations and eating situations and to uh, be uh, callous 
callous to the pains and pleasures of this material world and uh, focus uh, on the spiritual dimension of life. Uh, Srila Prabhupada points out that uh, often uh, beginners on the path of spiritual life, uh, and sometimes it's helpful, they lean towards being uh, impersonal, uh, being uh, you know, very renounced, not wanting to indulge in any kind of uh, something uh, sensual or bodily that seems to be pleasurable and trying very hard to uh, have a very dim view of the material world. It's a horrible place and uh, it's, it's not uh, not my home and everything is terrible. And, and there is, of course, uh, some truth to that uh, because it is not our home. Uh, but again, uh, uh, this is a treatment uh, ultimately, in our healthy condition, even in this life, uh, anandam buddhi bhardana, Lord Chaitanya says, cheto darpana marjanam bhava mahagavagni nirvarpanam, that uh, anandam buddhi bhardana, that this sankirtan, this singing and chanting of Krishna's holy names and meditation on Krishna, will bring us to anandam. Uh, tremendous joy, spiritual joy, and this, that is this, the spiritual world is not a sad place. It's a very happy place, and everything is beautiful, beautiful, fantastic uh, buildings and gardens uh, that we can't uh, we can get some idea. It's just so so opulent and beautiful. And there's no suffering, no toothaches or headaches or backaches, nothing. Uh, there's no fear of death. There's no pain. So uh, in one sense, we could think that I had better get used to being able to uh, be happy, uh, fully joyful. And what is their qualification? What is the qualification of those in the spiritual world? That they're in love with Krishna. They love Krishna. Uh, we, conditioned souls, each advaisya samutena dvanva mohena bharata, as Krishna tells Arjuna, uh, we have become fallen uh, because of our uh, rebellion against Krishna. And we have fallen into a less opulent situation of life. We have fallen down into a a uh, very conditioned existence, uh, unhealthy. I was thinking also earlier today that we can uh, reflect, just like sons and daughters of very wealthy families, like in Saudi Arabia or Kuwait, uh, these those different Arabian countries, fantastically wealthy families. They don't have two or three million dollars in the bank. They have 50, 60 billion dollars in the bank. Such wealth we cannot imagine. If you look at the different videos of Dubai and the lifestyles of those people, it's just, it's another planet. Uh, but uh, we have seen, and it happens, that sometimes a daughter or a son, they become rebellious. They, they uh, act in some... Uh, corrupt way and they uh, leave they are forced to leave that situation and they don't have they're not in that place anymore uh, but they can come back so that that is just a, a slight idea or reference to our situation with Krishna he is uh, supremely uh, Bhagavan and where Krishna lives, Chintamani, uh, Prakara, Sadmasu, Kalpa, Riksha, everything is made of Kalpa, Riksha. There are a couple, well, there are Kalpa, Riksha trees. Uh, 
What's that? Chintamani Prakar Sattva Sukha Parviksha. Laksha Vrteshu Surabir. There are unlimited spiritual cows. Uh, so we are meant to meditate on this and attract our mind, attract our hearts and souls uh, so that we can go home, back to the spiritual world. So everyone there loves Krishna uh, more than where they live. And that is the qualification. Uh, just like the demigods. The demigods, they live in very opulent situation. They're not living in some poverty in any way whatsoever. But they can do that because of their devotion to Krishna. The opulence is secondary and their devotion to Krishna is primary. See, that's the thing. Uh, that's, that's the whole thing is... Uh, the quality of our life depends upon the quality of our relationship with Krishna. As uh, Srila Prabhupada writes in the Nectar Devotion, that love of Krishna is the one switch. And we turn that switch and it will brighten up gradually. It will brighten up our whole life gradually. Uh, as Srila Prabhupada writes there, he says, just try to love Krishna. And see what it does for your life. So this is our path of uh, becoming healthy. Reviving our understanding of Krishna. Our connection to Krishna. Our attitude of devotion to Krishna. Uh, and in this way we are guaranteed to return home. Back to the spiritual world. And in this life uh, we can have as good a life as any human can hope to have. Uh, so this is Krishna consciousness. And these uh, this whole second canto uh, is rich. It is very full of uh, opportunity to become Krishna conscious. There are so many details describing uh, the qualities of Krishna and how he is present everywhere. So any questions or comments? up to this point some discussion Hare Krishna are there any questions or comments from the group uh, yes I've got a question yes. Yes, yes Raj Kishori mm -hmm. Mataji. Then with Pranam. Then with Pranam to you, Mataji. Uh, Prabhu, we were talking about um, like Krishna in a very minute form, living in um, each soul everywhere on the earth and everywhere. So our meditation can be easy. But uh, before we meditate, we have to contemplate. Um, is this Krishna or is this not Krishna? And where does Krishna comes in this? And even if we're chanting or when we're doing just standing at the bus stop or on the train and we contemplate, and even if you get a good idea, by the time we come off the train, it's forgotten. You see, so looking at Krishna and finding Krishna, it's soon forgotten. Now, how do we deal with that? to be able to keep our meditation on Krishna. So how do we handle yes. that, please? Yeah, that's a, a very good question. And in fact, Arjuna asked basically the same question uh, as we might remember in the sixth chapter, right? Uh, Krishna was recommending deep meditation, contemplation. And Arjuna oh. said, but the, the thing is, my mind is, it goes here and there like the blowing wind. Uh, you know, I don't think I can practice this fixed meditation. Uh, what should I do? Right? Yes. And remember what Lord Krishna said in, in response. Uh, he said, it is possible by practice and detachment and by striving by right means. So, you know, anything, right? Isn't it? You know, we go on the street, we see these, sometimes there's people juggling on the street or they're playing some, guitar, musical, but how, so how do they do that so good? 
practice, 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 practice. So we practice and we strive by right means. You know, uh, we do what will help us and we don't do what won't help us. Uh, so that's it, I think. Uh, just practice. Non-stop. Uh, and desire, of course. I mean, we're naturally there has to be the uh, the firm desire to, to uh, be successful. Uh, so that that's that's for her uh, in a, very important uh, because our mind is guided by our fixed convictions. You know, our dis our values, our uh, goal of life that we have decided upon, uh, our subconsciously. Uh, so even then we have uh, advice about that that to uh, never forget the fourfold uh, birth, death, old age, disease the miseries of this material world and to uh, remind ourselves about the spiritual world uh, like this uh, so that we can uh, become more and more interested to always think of Krishna because our mind if in our heart we're going two ways at the same time to some extent, you know, there's one part of our subconscious or something which is uh, leaning towards not thinking of Krishna, and then there's another part which is, you know, our mind won't know what to do. So, and then also, uh, of course, we cannot. And, you know, this is perhaps uh, most important. Uh, at least I have, uh, I'm learning more and more uh, that we can't do it by our own power. We can't. And so when, if we come off the train and, oh boy, I've forgotten all that, we pray. Oh, Krishna, Hare Krishna, please help me. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Please uh, grant me uh, more strength and lead me to the ability to think of you. Uh, with more uh, fixity, more steadiness. We ask for assistance. We have to okay. ask for help. Okay. I, imagine, you know, Krishna, he can, uh, he can uh, grant us any kind of ability. But sometimes there are, often he waits until we ask. But then Bhagavad Gita says, It's very, very difficult to transcend. And I find that because I've been practicing and I've been chanting for a long time. And still, every morning when I get up, it is not necessary that, that I would think of Krishna straight away. At least once a week, instead of thinking of Krishna, I end up thinking of something else. And then I realize I'm in a mode of passion or ignorance and I've got to bring my mind back, drag it back yeah. to Krishna. Yeah. Yes. Which is a kind of love. You know, sometimes we think, oh, I don't love Krishna really. I'm not so. But that is a kind. If we, I remember a long time ago uh, when uh, devotee was giving class. So someone said, it was a sannyasi. So the devotee said, when, when am I going to become interested in Krishna consciousness? You know, I've been practicing for six years. And when am I going to have a taste for Krishna consciousness? And the Swami smiled and he said, you wouldn't be here if you didn't have some kind of a taste. You know, you do. You are a devotee. Don't think you're not a devotee. It's just uh, not as much as you would like. Uh, we shouldn't put ourselves down too much, uh, I think I'm trying to say. But these are very good points. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Some other discussion? For that reassurance. And so that we don't put ourselves down and say, oh, I'm worthless. I didn't do it. But thank you for that encouragement. Any other questions or comments? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Hare. Prabhuji, kindly ask your I question. Know, it's been a Sharana Prabhu. Thank you for Thank you. the class so far. Um, I just wanted to ask if, 
is it kaliuga all over the universe and i was just wondering that's an interesting question is it kaliuga all over the universe no no just like on such a yuga on such a loka it's not kali yuga uh, that is uh, for this middle middle planetary system uh, especially this planet earth which is the place of fruit of activities yeah. here we have cycles there they are always in the mode of goodness goodness Okay, Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you. I understand. Yeah. Just like uh, sometimes Srila Prabhupada would uh, point out that uh, you don't want to come back uh, into this Kali Yuga. You know, here, you don't want to go to the heavenly planets and then come back here. To, uh, you know, Kali Yuga is more. Yeah, Kali Yuga is Kali Yuga is Kali Yuga is Kali Yuga is Kali Yuga Oh, and so the question, what is that? What happens if you're never able to fully get into Krishna consciousness? Yeah, that that is a uh, that is a frustrating situation uh, well, I'd like to ask should we follow modern advice yeah one one minute here. I missed the first question. Well, here it is. So uh, the first question is about, should we follow modern advice like therapy as it's very popular? Uh, or should we follow the spiritual followings? I'm not sure I see the difference. Uh, in the course of uh, following the path of Krishna consciousness, when we feel weak, we eat. It helps our Krishna consciousness. Uh, if we fall and break our leg, we go to the doctor and uh, hospital, and it's treated. Uh, it helps so we can dance and we can carry on our devotional life. If we... Uh, for some reason, and there are some of us uh, who, uh, because of our childhood or whatever it may be, our past karma, uh, maybe uh, we find ourselves very depressed more than other people and uh, perhaps uh, having uh, excessive shyness and uh, uh, self-esteem issues. Uh, so it may be helpful to receive some counseling from someone who knows how to deal with such things so that we can come to uh, better mental health. But uh, it's for the purpose of uh, increasing our love for Krishna, increasing our Krishna consciousness. Uh, that is the purpose of it. And we utilize whatever uh, is available that is given by Krishna uh, that will help uh, to love him and serve him. That's all. Uh, of course, we are we are very, you know very cautioned. Just like someone may practice asanas, you know, uh, yogic asanas, which are good for your mental and physical health. And it's especially for if we are not mature or if we are very immature we might think that we have become successful because now my mind is peaceful. I'm practicing the pranayam, I'm practicing the asanas, my mind is peaceful, I feel good, and I don't need Krishna. I'm going to the therapy, and uh, they're giving me some techniques so I can feel more 
uh, at peace and um, strong in my mind. And now I'm successful. I don't need Krishna Bhakti. So that is that, that you know, with anything, uh, that can be a concern. Uh, uh, you know, as we as we make progress, that should be much less of an issue because our focus is what will help uh, my uh, practice of sadhana. Uh, in the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Srila Prabhupada writes, uh, where Lord Krishna is describing the different levels of devotees. So he says, uh, for those who are coming from a sinful, unregulated, uh, there's another another word, but those who are coming from a background of uh, many sinful reactions, devotional service can be very difficult. Where we, you know, me and you and all of us, we're not all on the same page. Uh, and some of us uh, may need, uh, you know, there, there, there are people who are so emotionally disturbed, they think so poorly of themselves. They can hardly function. They grew up without nurturing. They grew up without warm love. They grew up without feeling valued. And uh, they're a mess, to put it simply. And it's very difficult to practice Krishna. They can't. How can such a person believe that God loves them when they don't even love themselves? My parents never loved me. My relatives, I don't. You know. There are people like that. And for them, uh, it can be extremely helpful to get fixed a little bit, to become healed uh, emotionally. So whatever we need, as far as I understand, we take advantage of whatever we can without becoming distracted. That's all. And whether it's modern or it's ancient, what's the difference? There are those who don't understand this. At least that's my perspective. They don't. They don't. Don't under. Krishna says, "I'm the healing herb." So if we have you know, sore throat, should we not, well, it's not spiritual. I should just chant Hare Krishna. And there are, there is a very advanced level of Krishna consciousness, uh, the uh, Abhadutas, it's called the Abhadutas. Uh, there are examples in Srimad Bhagavatam uh, who don't, they don't eat. They just lay on the ground and if food comes, it comes. And if it doesn't come, then it doesn't come. And there is a level like that. But I'm not on that level. I'll, I'll go crazy in my mind if I try and live like that. Uh, and there's very few people. So we should not imitate. We should live a very practical life, uh, which is helpful for ourselves. What, what we need may not be exactly what someone else needs. And we should not be bothered by that. And they should not be bothered by that. What do you think? Thank you, Krishna, for this herb. Thank you for this food. Thank you for the doctor. Thank you for the therapy that I took for three months or six months, and I feel much better. We see it in relationship to Krishna. So then uh, the next part of that question is that, uh, is it possible to become attached to devotees uh, absolutely, and we must, we must, because I don't know Krishna. Who knows Krishna, especially in the beginning? Uh, but the devotees, especially the pure devotees, but all devotees, to become attached to, to the devotees means to become attached to Krishna. There's no possibility of being Krishna conscious without being attached to uh, some devotees, at least. And Krishna says, one who says he's my, my devotee is not. But one who says he is the devotee, the lover of my devotees, that is my real devotee. So we should very, very much try to develop close relationships, especially and specifically with advanced devotees, and even more specifically with our spiritual master. 
the more we become attached and affectionate and appreciative of our spiritual master and advanced devotees, our Krishna consciousness will become uh, very strong. Uh, and then about non-attachment, this is this is the uh, wonderful thing about uh, bhakti yoga, or about the uh, the principle of bhakti yoga is that you know as we become attached to spirit, then we automatically become less attached to matter. You know, rather than struggling to become detached from material desires, if we focus more, or at the same time, we focus a little more towards uh, loving Krishna, becoming attracted to Krishna, automatically those other things will go away. You know, like sometimes people ask, well, uh, what can I do about uh, lusty desires? What can I do about lust? Will I ever be free of it? And I like to have a little fun. I say, no, you'll, you will never be free of lust. Never. <laughs> you know, I can I can hear or I can see the person becoming oh what's they become horrified uh, but our process is to turn what is the lust the lust is love of Krishna so this is the secret we just have to turn it back to what it is or where it should go which is love of so the more our heart is attracted to Krishna, then poof, the lust will go away. Or the the, the unhealthy uh, attraction uh, to uh, the rati, the bhava, for material things will automatically go down, down, down. You know, uh, the bhakti yoga is not uh, a stanga yoga or raja yoga and we are only trying to hold ourselves back from desires but we are we are taking the positive more practical method of uh turning our, our desires in the right direction that's all that madness to eat biscuits is just love of krishna that's all it is you know our madness for whatever it is just the original baba the original rati attachment for Krishna. So if we work on that, if we look at the deity forms of Krishna and we try, oh, let me become attracted to Krishna or Lord Chaitanya or Srimati Radharani or Lord Ram. We pray, may I please be attracted to you. Uh, and we hear about Krishna and try and become attracted, uh, appreciate, so we try and love. Instead of loving biscuits or sex, we try and love Krishna. You see? So then gradually, uh, it, uh, it reverts. It begins to flow in, in the right direction. So to become, de to be, being detached means to be attached to the good thing. At the same time, we, uh, you know, for some time, we also use our willpower. We have to, you know, we have to control our senses by our decision. Uh, and we practice. It's true. We practice utilizing things without being attached to them, which is not so. Which is which is again very simple. Oh, this this food is so delicious. Thank you, Krishna. It's not that it's not delicious. It is, uh, in a relative way. Uh, so we appreciate and we love Krishna more instead of oh, I, we just become, you know, that's all we think about is eating. Uh, so you know, we practice uh, using Krishna's things uh, in Chris with appreciation for him, remembering they're connected to him, and then everything becomes clean. Everything becomes much cleaner and uh, progressive. And we can be happy because we're able to live uh, without denying our senses too much. So then uh, what to do if you're always feeling like you want to advance, but since you are working, you are unable. Um, uh, 
Well, I don't, I think eventually all of us will get to be, you know, 70, 80 years old and <laughs> we won't be working very much. So I think for all of us, there will be a time when there'll be nothing left to do except think of Krishna. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, we can utilize it uh, as a motivation. You know, instead of that, that uh, it's good to feel frustrated or incomplete in Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, we won't strive, right? If we think, oh, everything, I'm Krishna conscious, I'm, I'm completely at the point that I want to be, that I should be, everything is finished. Then for us, everything will be finished. So sometimes Krishna puts us in a situation where we're, oh, I wish I could chant more. I wish I could read more. I wish I could go to the temple more. I, I can't. I have to work at this lousy job. It's so many hours and all these people are talking nonsense. And, uh, so we are lamenting for Krishna. We are wanting Krishna. He is increasing our desire. And it will be fulfilled. It will be, Just like now, right? We wake up in the morning and we're reminded of some nonsense thing or something which isn't directly Krishna conscious that we uh, to do. Uh, so in the same way, uh, we will become reminded to be devotees. And we see, we see children who are born into uh, devotee families and they're just like nuts about Krishna. You know, there are, they, they just, uh, they're just automatically, you know, Jai Prabhupada and they're bowing down to Krishna because in their last life they worked at a job and they were lamenting, oh, I wish I could be Krishna conscious. You see, so actually it's, uh, it will bring us forward. Yeah, so, um, so the, you know, the, in that Nectar of Instruction book, there are, there are um, very uh, simple, just six or 10 different guidelines to be successful. So one of them is uh, uh, Utsahara Nishchayat Darya, Tat Tat Pravartana, that uh, we should be in, we should uh, be patient and enthusiastic. We have to be patient, you know. We have to be realistic. I'm not going to be chanting all day and you know doing uh, full devotional practices for a while. You know, otherwise we'll go mad. You know, we have to be a little. A little settled. Well, this is what I'm going to be doing for some time. And after some time, I'll be able to do more. So we are patient. But at the same time, we're enthusiastic that let me find a way to take some days off or let me somehow rearrange my time. Or, you know, so we, we're always looking for ways to increase. But at the same time, uh, we're patient. We're patient. And it may take two lives. Or three lifetimes. What's that? We've been in this material world for many, many hundreds of lifetimes. So what's another two or three lifetimes? From one perspective. You know, we're eternal. We're eternal. So I hope I hope that uh, is helpful, I'm sure. Uh, you know, we can add more to that. But uh, that is summed up. Patience and enthusiasm. Thank you very much, Prabhuji, for uh, this thought that we can sleep with tonight. Patience and enthusiasm. Um, Rajkishori Mataji, are you able to uh, conclude the session for today, Mataji? We have exhausted our time for that evening today okay maybe i can uh, thank uh, prabhuji prabhuji thank you so much for today's session and um, we love your class because you always leave us with some bullet points to meditate on um, and think about it um, uh, the whole week so thank you very much prabhuji and um, uh, let us all unmute and chant the Hare Krishna Ma Mantra in glorification of Dina Sharan Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare. Hare.
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे वंच कल्प तरूप कृपा सिंधु थैंक यू Thank you thank, thank you, you so much thank you I thank wish you. everyone well take care Hare Krishna thank you Prabhu Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna thank you everybody for joining in Hare Krishna